Hey everybody, a couple of need to knows before I pass it off to Pastor Jeff Lucas with us this weekend. Uh, the first is that we are definitely looking for volunteers to engage specifically in the areas of media and worship and Timberline Student Ministries and Timber Kids. Those areas, man, we have great opportunities to engage, great teams for you to participate in. So if you're interested in volunteering in any of those areas, in any capacity, even if you just have questions of what does that entail if I'm volunteering in those areas, reply to this email, we'd love to get you connected. And then speaking of children's ministry and Timber Kids, this week we have VBS here at the Windsor campus, so it's gonna be stellar and out of this world. Um, and so we're really looking forward to having a couple hundred kids in this place, serving them well and uh, engaging their faith in ways that we know is critical in the lives of our youth. So be praying over that, be praying over our volunteers. Pastor Jeff Lucas. Thanks, Pastor John, and it's great to be with you during this glorious summery weekend. I hope you've got your Factor 90 sun cream on. Actually, it's just been, it's been like a deluge, hasn't it? Well, we're continuing this uh, series in the book of Mark, and when I discovered what I'd be talking about uh, this weekend, I thought, wow, that's so awesome, because I'm talking about an execution. What a happy subject. The characters in this particular story, which we find in Mark chapter 6, there's a guy called King Herod. That's not Herod the Great, that's his dad. King Herod the Tetrarch, and, uh, and then uh, his wife, Herodias, and uh, her daughter, probably also called Herodias. Obviously, this family didn't have much imagination when it came to choosing names. And what happens is that John the Baptist has been confronting Herod because of his choice to marry Herodias, who was his half-brother's wife. That was not good. Word about Jesus has been getting around. Herod has heard about this, and he is rather puzzled. You read about this in Mark 16, excuse me, Mark 6, and verses 14 to 29. What is this story all about beyond an execution? Really, it's about choices. It's been said that we make 35,000 choices every day, 266 choices about food. I want to know, how do they know? Regardless of that, it's really important that we make good and wholesome choices. Good decisions affect our lives, and not only our lives, but the lives of others. John the Baptist lost his head because of a series of really bad decisions by Herod. So first of all, let's know that our choices, our decisions shape our legacy. What we choose today will affect how we will uh, be known tomorrow. And it's interesting that Jesus referred to Herod as that fox. And then two verses later, he says, Jerusalem, I would have loved to have gathered you like a, a hen gathers its chicks. I'd never put those two together. Jesus was saying, that man is a fox, but I would have gathered you. This is really not a good legacy. And yet John the Baptist, Jesus says of him, there's no one born greater. What will our legacy be? What will Jesus say about us? Herod violated his conscience. He's a man confused, but his legacy was corrupted as a result of that. Secondly, Let's make anchor or mindless choices. When you study Herod, you see that he's a man who's all over the place. One minute he's listening to his wife, the next he's listening uh, to John the Baptist. He just cannot make up his mind. I think we need to make anchor choices in our lives that become mindless. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we decide, and then having decided, we refuse to negotiate any further about that. They are mindful, they are anchor, and then they become mindless. It's often in the dialogue, in the conversation, that our resolution is eroded. And Herod never did that. It might be good to talk and think about anchor choices that we need to make in our lives. Thirdly, let's refuse to flirt with faith. Herod liked to listen to John. Herod 
was looking forward to meeting Jesus, we read later. He's like a happy churchgoer, a sermon consumer, but he's never really full on in any way with any kind of commitment to Jesus. On the contrary, let's not flirt with faith. Let's be all in. Fourthly, let's just know, and maybe it's pretty obvious, but choices made at parties, they're usually perilous. It's really clear from this story and by the phrasing in the Greek, Herod was drunk. He had had too much to drink. He repeats his oath twice. Ask me for anything you want, I'll give it to you, he says to Herodias. Never make a good choice, either at a party or when, excuse me, never make a bad choice, either at a party, I'm sounding like I'm under the influence myself, <laughs> or because we're under pressure or because we're distracted. He would live to regret that choice that he made. Let's be thoughtful and careful. The last thing is this, and that is know that bad choices tend to lead to even worse choices because later on, it would be Herod who meeting Jesus and he was looking forward to meeting him. But here's what we read in Luke 23. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Bad choices led to even worse choices. When we're not being decisive, we don't stand on level ground. It's a downhill ride. So as I conclude all of this, there is a, a real note of encouragement for us, especially if we know that we've made some really poor choices in the past. And that is that God is able to redeem even our worst decisions. Actually, ultimately, God did that with Herod's choices. We read in Acts chapter 4, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus. This is the early church praying, whom you anointed. And look at this. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. God took the terrible choices of Herod and flipped all of that around and ultimately redeemed the situation, not for Herod because he never... He never came in repentance. In fact, he kept listening to his wife. Uh, she told him later, we know this from sources outside of the Scriptures, uh, he, she told him to go and see the Emperor Caligula and ask him for the title of the king. He never actually was a king. And when Mark calls him that, Mark is doing this. Herod the king. He never learned he kept listening to the wrong voices. He made the wrong choices. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about anchor decisions that we might need uh, to make in our lives. Let's share about that and perhaps ask for prayer about decisions that we are in the middle of right now, asking God for his wisdom and his help. This week, with God's help, let's choose well.